Hey everybody, this is Andrew Greer with CCM Magazine. We are here with some of our favorite folks, John Foreman from the band Switchfoot and Matt Thiessen and Matt Hoops from Reliant K. So we are glad to have you all in one room, which I have heard has not happened since last summer, at least. Yeah, we, we played a show together last summer. I, can I look now? Are they yeah. there? Yeah. <laughs> the, it's really oh, yeah. Hey. 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 I see you. So yeah. 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 That's how we do. Yeah. Yeah. It's, more, it's more like a dating game or something. Yeah. But, um, Tell them what they want. <laughs> <laughs> so where did you guys first meet? Do you remember? What city? Well, it was in Ohio. You, know, you don't. You do. <laughs> it was Toledo. Toledo, Ohio. And I, I, think. I think you you were... You, this is the way I remember the first time I heard, remembered playing with you guys was, um, five, it was with Five Iron Frenzy, and I remember it like, it was a festival, and there was this open field, and I heard Reliant K playing, and the sun was setting, and there's this big <laughs> green hill, and I'm like this 19 year old kid running down the hill, going, running off into the sunset, to see my friends in Reliant K. Uh, that's the way I that's, remember that's it. That's a good memory. Yeah. That's good. Is that how you remembered it? Um, the Well, maybe I, this could be a different time, a different yeah. day. Yeah. But I remember the first day, uh, was it was in a gymnasium or something. It was, it was with Five Hour Frenzy. And uh, you, your whole band came in at once. And we were, I don't know, we were, I guess we were nervous. Because we never really opened for signed bands before or anything like that and <laughs> the whole switchfoot crew came in with these big smiles which the hands outstretched crew means the, there was four yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. they were touring in a what minivan at the time oh, yeah strong so, we a very toured... short minivan yeah, yeah. Well, hey no, 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 very was, short yeah minivan. it was no, cool it was, you guys were the, the four pieces yeah it, was it wasn't the grand caravan yeah no we we toured in minivan for years you know yeah. so but it, Burning stripes. It was a lasting impression that first encounter. Like uh, ever, you know, on the the fifteen years past, or how long has it been? Twenty years mm -hmm. since then, something like that. Like that everybody you meet that's met Switchfoot, they're always like, they're the nicest guys ever. And you're like, yeah, I know. It's I'm, the most I met them once too. We were talking yeah. about that. And yeah. It's yeah. like it's, but in both of you guys. I think when I think of Ryan Cain, I think of Switchfoot. I think of um, this. You know. A really large faith-based constituency from kind of early on, but yet all this mainstream access and kind of the balance of that. Like, have you guys felt there's a benefit? Uh, has there been a benefit, or how has this impacted your journey, your ability to make music, how you create it, how you relate to fans, to not necessarily be tied down to the parameters of maybe quote unquote Christian music genre or church culture specifically, but yet have that as part of your history um i think there's benefits to both um you know to, of having ties to it and and not having ties to it and like kind of having this it's not a gray area sort of thing but it's just like an all-encompassing sort of and i think you know bands like five iron and even six pence on the richer and especially switchfoot like taught us how to do it how to just embrace the whole thing and and it honestly doesn't have to influence I don't know you don't have to think about the audience all the time when you're creating something you just think about what you want to create and uh, I don't know it's it's just good to know that there's people out there that support it and they come from different places and that sort of thing mm -hmm. um, yeah like, like you said I think the permission to be honest I think Five Iron and you know touring with Five Iron for both of us was a <clears throat> huge thing because for me, you know, that meant it's this do-it-yourself DIY kind of ethic. So you're screen printing, not really screen printing, you're spray painting your own t-shirts, <laughs> like in the parking lot. You're setting up the lights, you're setting up the sound, you're talking to people. And there's all types of people come in the show. And, and you realize people are people and they want an honest expression of life. And so for me, I'm gonna be honest about my faith and honest about where I'm coming from and I respect that in anyone you know whether it's um, bad religion or the Beastie Boys or Tupac whoever you know like if you got a story and it's honest then I'm all ears so that's kind of I think that's kind of how you learn that is by touring with people that can kind of give you that permission to just tell the truth
we were talking about this earlier about telling our story how that's a safe that that taking the risk of sharing our story is a safe thing because that's what we've been allowed to experience so you two guys you know um do you feel like you resonate with that statement as far as like you were saying you don't necessarily have to or when you're creating music you're not always thinking this micro level of like the audience and how they'll receive it but maybe more from what i have to offer which is your story right for sure yeah um I don't know. Uh, there's there's always been just this comfortable place that we've found ourselves when we're creating our music or art or whatever you want to call it, and um, it's it's just an easy thing to do. I don't know. We we just don't worry about what people have to say about us. Or, I yeah, I, th I think sometimes we don't feel like we quite fit in anywhere. I think that's kind of the other side of the coin. Is uh, maybe not quite feeling like we fit in with all elements of the church or all elements of um, people who aren't connected with the church even. Uh, so I think I think that's been something that we've dealt with and uh, we try to even embrace that fact about mm -hmm. that we're just here being ourselves mm -hmm. and we're kind of, uh, you know, sometimes it doesn't always make sense to everyone, but we're trying to be honest and uh, do what we do. Does that tension, you know, sometimes not really totally resonating, feel like you resonate with this audience and not really, and feeling like there's a divide, does that tension, and you can speak this too, John, does that tension provide some kind of creative outlet as well, though? Does, uh, yeah, it gives us an identity. I mean, mm -hmm. it's a non-identity identity. You know, we're just the, the Sandlot kids, you know, we're just out mm -hmm. there, like, in, on the fringes and just doing, I don't know, our thing. And it's, to us, it's been an Ohio thing, and I'm sure for you guys, it's California, you know, somewhat surfing thing. You know, there's a, there's parts of the, our culture and how we grew up and, um, that, that makes defines you know how we how we do it. Yeah, yeah that's good. I do think that it is it is interesting because you you talk about not fitting in with either side. You know, I, mm -hmm. I definitely feel that. You know, you play like the mainstream rock festivals, and mm -hmm. you're like, oh, we're we're definitely not quite. We fit in, but not necessarily. You play the you know the Christian festivals, you fit in, but not not really resonating with everything but I think that there's <clears throat> there's also something to idea that anything that is cool has a shelf life anything that is completely identified as mm -hmm. ska mm -hmm. or whatever it's like oh it's the thing give it a year mm -hmm. and I think that the you know the fact that we're still making music that we believe in and are passionate about kind of is also maybe tied to the fact that we've never been identified with anything. It's always been just, well, this is who we are and we're just gonna, you know, be ourselves. Yeah. Our next record is dubstep, by the way. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> I knew I was confused. Just kidding. I felt confused, but then I met him. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, you know, the, this mutual influence, I, I, I was looking at, at the Reliance Facebook page and, and you guys had, um, had posted a quote from John uh, that was, uh, John, this is, quote, you, I think, you know, if attributed correctly, every blessing comes with a set of curses. This was something that you guys have posted, which uh, is a brief statement, but has a lot of, a lot of stuff in it. So I guess my question is for you first, John, and, and you, we think of, like, our strengths, weaknesses, right? Our gifts are also, also often our vices and things like that, but um, you said it. So you, so I'd love for you to unpack it uh, a little bit. Well, they said that after they found out that we were going on tour together. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! So it's self-explanatory. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, no, it's true. You know, like whatever your strength is, that's going to be the very thing that you have to watch. Um, and you learn to rely on it to detriment of your soul or whatever it is. You know, and and I think for me when I was. I wrote that, um, um, it's, it's from a song called Vice Versus, and um, I'm trying to remember what I was thinking about at the time, but I, I was walking along the Pacific Ocean, there's a California thing, Yeah. and, and the, there's this, the high tide line is where all the, the trash from the night before gets washed up, you know, and felt like my head was cluttered with all these things, and so that's kind of where what I was thinking about trying to dissect uh, what was going on in, in my life and there were I think we both had um, 
dreams come true as far as like selling records and, and not even really dreams that you've had but like the the american dream of like wow you can play in front of a lot of people mm -hmm. and sell records it's crazy that you can pay a rent with the music that's that's crazy but i think there's this flip side of that coin where where um there's a lot of things that that can go really wrong very quickly um in music but especially in rock and roll and with friendships and with um navigating relationships and so I'm pretty sure that's where that song was dealing with, wrestling with all those issues. How do you resonate with what he's talking about? Yeah, I mean, it's it's true. It's even just from the simple thing of traveling all the time, um, no matter if you're in a band or if you're a businessman or anything, you know, it's like something that, that supplies, it puts food on the table, but it's also taxes your, your soul, whatever. Um, what was the line that... that Rhymes with the hearses line. Um, you got your babies. I got my hearses. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool. Um, I love that song. Oh, oh thanks. Yeah, man. it's good. But, yeah. Um, I I feel like to me it's almost like unfair to ask John to unpack that line. <laughs> and it's so funny to me too because that line, uh, has been so meaningful to me. Like I've I've felt like I've like heard that song and it's meant different things to me at that time and, uh, even thinking about. Uh, you know, like life and death, like babies, and bringing people into this world that is like broken and messed up, and you know, it's it's pain. You know, like you're bringing things into pain, and and just thinking about all the complexities of like almost everything good that happens has, you know, mm -hmm. like like there's just a balance there, and it and it's beautiful, and and you can sit here and be thankful for it, but it's also like there's there's like a pain in there. You know that I think that line has always resonated with me in that, you know. When being honest and articulating the pain in that portion of our story, in some ways gives us permission to celebrate the beauty, right? Yeah, to, yeah. To be a part of what is light, you know, which we've been talking about with Switch with Sing Record coming out, where the light yeah. shines through, and talking about human woundedness, uh, but how that is a gateway to, I mean, our woundedness, you know, we were talking about this as our common denominator, so that's where we yeah. connect. So without being honest and authentic about that, then we've missed out on some other connection, right? So music, so in music is, is one of the mediums. We talked a little bit about this, but music is the medium, um, maybe the greatest medium. You know, we think about even in our culture and like, you know, even how, how big a part of our lives, um, professional sports is and NFL and things, music still supersedes all that. Somehow music has taken the cake, you know? And uh, so talk a little bit just about how music, how, how you guys have utilized music to help you tell that story and to help you kind of ease in or press into the pain and maybe resurrect a little light. I, I think that music is intrinsically important. It is like uh, more important than I think we often give it credit for. It's, uh, there's a spirituality to it. There's like... Uh, a depth to music that I think is hard to describe even just in playing at a thing on piano or guitar there's like there's something important there and uh, I don't know I think it's really interesting to see like the difference of uh, I was having this conversation with a friend a while back and uh, you know she'll post like very deep and like meaningful things to her like on social media and I was kind of <laughs> like telling her I was like you should write songs about that like this does, I was like doesn't this feel like kind of unfulfilling to just not that it's wrong to put those things out there but doesn't it feel like a little bit unfulfilling like you should finish a song about that you know like because it's almost like that's what that's for that's what this music is for and that's like part of what makes it important it's part of what helps us express and connect and you know all be here together yeah john you were kind of saying how it's like almost an incomplete thought like our words are almost incomplete without the body of music yeah, well, I, I was even thinking, like, everyone talks about, like, recorded music as, like, lamenting, like, the loss of vinyl and the interactiveness of physical music. But it's just so funny when you think of music as this uh, form of expression that's been around for so much longer than recorded mm -hmm. music, you know? And, and um, you know, with kids, you see... Uh, any kid with any instrument, I mean, the ground becomes an instrument. Yes, Everything right. is an instrument. And and um, I think that 
there's something about that form of expression that feels uh, innately human and um, gratifying to 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 actually get to a place. I, I know for me, songs have like the, there's one time I broke up with this girl and I was driving down this mountain in and it was in California and and. Uh, <laughs> And James Taylor, that white record of the greatest hits, I had that that on. It wasn't. The, it was like the CD, and I was, and I'm just driving, and I'm just like, I never forget it because it felt like it was the. There were so many songs that were like the expression of where I was at, and um, I don't know. It it is, I think, a very deep portion of what it means to be human. Music soundtracks our lives. You, you know, you think about like you were saying, the bang, even the earth, and create a drum from the ground, and. Uh, music i think we talked about some of this earlier has been around from the beginning in the sense of if you think of acoustic instruments or what just manipulating the music that i feel like is already inside the earth you know yeah birds i mean they sing and there's notes there and you're like why why does this bird get to choose these notes and do they change their song you know like when does the bird go to the next track and decide to sing something new <laughs> or does he like the one so much and you know, it has to do with mating and all that stuff too. But it's just—it's a really cool thing. I want to get into it. Sometimes, <laughs> yeah. sometimes I can get dogs to sing with me. You know, like I start like howling at a dog, and I get the dog. I'm trying to get the dog in the right pitch. You know, and like it's stuff like that. Um, that I don't know. Music has these like X factors. Like this, there's, there's questions you don't know where it comes from, and I don't know. I like to think about angels and that that kind of music and and that sort of stuff and are we all turning into, you know, people are getting better at singing all the time. The, the technology and the way things are, people are more exposed to how to create music, how to get, improve yourself. And we're all turning into great musicians, like everybody. And we're gonna have this voice, you know, the human race is gonna just, everybody's gonna be able to sing at some point, I think, you know, or something. It's great, anyway. I love music. I'm just thinking when I'm singing with a dog. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. I'm it's thinking really about the bird changing it. tracks. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's actually like, to, like it's a little. Um, uh, I, let's stay down there for a second. <laughs> because, like, okay, my friend makes guitars and um, he talks about resonance and that everything that has mass has a resonance to it, mm -hmm. resonant frequencies. And, like, that you like that's the reason why a window pane will rattle when a truck drives by it, it matches the resonant frequency of the window pane and and the idea that like you know if you think about the spirituality of a god who speaks things into existence and then who breathes life into things that it's like when when we are resonating with you know at at that frequency there's when somebody says something or seeing something sometimes it resonates within you where you think oh that that woke yeah. something up inside of me you know yeah maybe that's what you're doing with the dogs you yeah know? i mean but it's weird <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's not weird yeah. it's, no no it, no and then then there's lyrics too which you yeah, know goes yeah. on top of that and mm -hmm. Some, sometimes I, I'm writing music more often than I want to. Sometimes I'm, I'm in a room with strangers and my job that day is to write a song. And um, sometimes I don't want to. And, and you're trying to figure out what these words, because you got to get out of there at a certain time. So you got to have, you know, two verses, a bridge, and, and a chorus by the time you're done. So you, you just start letting words come off of your tongue and what sounds the best, what sings the best, you know? You always say that, like, oh, this sings better than that. And... I don't know, it's pretty interesting how then those words end up striking mm -hmm. a chord with people too and, and making people think things and, mm -hmm. I don't know, bringing people to tears or, of joy or you know, sadness, you know. I think that love is deeply creative as well, you know, and that ties back into um, John, you know, God mm -hmm. is love mm -hmm. and, and the idea that, like, um, the first thing you know about God is that he creates. The first thing you know about man is he's made in God's image mm -hmm. and then... If God is love, then that that must stamp must be on us too, you know. When what does that look like? How do how do you love your neighbor? You know, I think you have to be creative though. You have to be mm -hmm. like, oh, what does he need? Yeah. How can I figure out how I interact with that need? Because I don't need it, and I've never experienced mm -hmm. that. But I have to figure it out, you know. Coming full circle back to in the you know talking about. In the beginning, where you guys were in vans, and then in, in kind the of beginning, there was <laughs> there, there was, was my, okay. <laughs> in vans, <laughs> 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 
Okay, well, from a non-scriptural uh, point of view. So, Adam John. Adam John and Yeah, Adam John, Adam John. Gosh, he's so narcissistic. So, um, uh, I just seeing you know y'all's maturation, like from these you know these bands that have now become and these musicians and artists, and uh, I think of up and coming bands and, and, and you know people listening into this and reading this you know there'll be a lot of aspiring musicians and I think of even like bands and musicians and artists who are even on the verge already of widespread success you know that the those kind of doors are opening uh, in ways to mainstream accessibility like we we're talking about but maybe they came from some kind of faith-based culture so what would you have to say to them in in directing or in helping guide them in keeping their spirit intact, like kind of what you referenced earlier about rock and roll, you know, and it, it can get in some tough places. Music as a livelihood can be difficult. What would, do you have something you would say to them or just something you've learned in that maturing process of how to kind of keep the spirit intact or hmm. alive or, you yeah. know? I mean, you know, don't don't get jaded, you know. Is is step one, and and it, that Good was luck yeah. I mean, it was, it's been pretty easy for us so far. Matt and I was like, the, the day this band isn't fun anymore, we're gonna quit, you know. Yeah. And and it's always fun. Um, some days are challenging, some days aren't. But and mm -hmm. I see that in you too. You know, you're you just made your tenth album. Like you want to do this. You're doing this. Yeah. Like it's great. Um, but the blue the blueprint for what how our band started out is. Uh, not applicable anymore I would say just because of the way mm -hmm. music is now um, yeah. so we can't really plug in what our experience literally were uh, experiences and, and, and have expected to work these days but um, but yeah so I guess just keeping that good attitude is really all I can think of um, mm -hmm. you know. yeah I think rather than like b actual business advice it's mm -hmm. more of like just personally staying you know staying grounded staying honest uh, you know finding ways to challenge yourself in in things that you personally need to be challenged on everybody kind of has their own path and their own story and their own experience uh, yeah that, that is a funny thing like there there is no like mm -hmm. way that you do music mm -hmm. the other thing is um, the idea that I think a lot of people would see success as again tied to record sales and ticket sales and I I would challenge that notion the idea that perhaps success is true honesty I mean I'm I'm sure we would both cite people that that we look up to and still think are the probably some of the most amazing musicians on the planet that you know they don't actually make a lot of money that they, they come through Nashville and they don't sell out and you know and they might still be in a van and trailer or whatever and and arguably they are the most successful musicians on the planet mm -hmm. so um don't tie don't don't let somebody else's construct of what success is um limit your own ability to be honest with your music because sometimes i think the the most important shows of your life are the ones that many people might overlook where you're like well tomorrow we're gonna play this big show but tonight we're just playing for like just 10 kids those 10 kids that could be like the most important show yeah. of your life yeah. and you missed it because it you were you were focused on something else you know mm -hmm. so like the joy of the moment don't miss it you know and then the, I, like I think what you're saying is true like honesty like mm -hmm. if you can maintain that honesty that's mm -hmm. that's success 